I'm here today with Marco Biagioli, a well-known Italian arbiter. Um, thank you for coming to our event. And, thank you, John, and good afternoon. And I would be very interested to find out how did you get involved in chess and, and, and later in chess organization? Well, I got involved in chess at the age of four because my father taught me how to play. So basically I entered in a chess club the first time at the age of five and then I never stopped. In a certain moment, I also used to play tournaments, but uh, this finished uh, uh, approximately when I finished the high school, and then I entered in arbitrating, which was 20 years ago. And then I have been doing the arbitrary for the last 20 years. But also, as I was progressing in my career, I entered in the chess administration, so I worked a lot for the Italian Chess Federation in different positions, I was directing in a certain moment the local district. Uh, I was, of course, the director of the club. Then uh, I entered in the Arbiters Commission and uh, I finally ended up in uh, uh, coordinating the tournament's activity now as I am in charge to authorize the tournaments. So as I always say to someone who, to anyone who is asking me, uh, why are you in chess? That uh, I wonder why I am in law because I have ever been in chess. So even if I have a different job because I am a lawyer, I was always involved in chess all my life. Right. Um, so I've noticed from talking to people from all over the world, chess federations have, they do their own things and there is no one right way or one single model. So how is the Italian Chess Federation organized and set up? Uh, in Italy, we have a model which derives from the law regulating all sports federations affiliated to the Olympic Committee. So the Italian Chess Federation follows it uh, as well, of course. Uh, we are organized with a central structure, which is basically the board and all uh, relevant services, including the one I am in charge of. And this is elected uh, once every four years. Uh, part of the board is elected by the chess clubs affiliated to the chess federation and there is a certain quota of board members elected by uh, the trainers and a certain quota of board members elected by the players. So uh -huh. it is a composed structure. We have a direct election for the president, then the chess clubs are electing some members, the chess trainers are electing other members, the chess players are electing other members. And, and, who, and who, who elects? The president who votes in that? the chess clubs so it's the the chess club the chess clubs have quite a lot of power then yes yes the the chess federation has memberships for the chess clubs not for individuals normally individuals are all members of the chess clubs and then the chess clubs are member of the chess federation so in fact when you want to register for the chess federation you cannot register as an individual this was possible up to the 80s and then it was cancelled now, if you want to be a member of the Italian Chess Federation, you have to register for a chess club and the chess club will get a membership for you. Okay. But we also have local committees. Uh, Italy has 21 regions and these 21 regions have a regional committee in charge. And they are elected as well, provided they have more than 10 chess clubs in their jurisdictions. Otherwise, there is a delegate nominated by the board. All this structure is lasting for four years. Then, when the Olympic cycle finishes, we go to elections. And the election is a certain process we see, which is designed, streamlined in a specific way. Now it will happen in the end of this year because it's uh, the end of the Olympic cycle 2024. So we will go for the regional committee elections. Then there will be the board election and the president election. And after it, we will have the elections for the Arbiters Commission because our Arbiters Commission is elected. And this starts normally in the end of October and will finish in February 2025. And tell me, is the, is, are the elections for the, 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 the president, is that normally a very heated election or is it normally, is it quite a calm kind of where there might be only one person going up? It happened a few times that we only had one candidate, uh, but we also had in the past some uh, transition moments with more than one. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, it, it's never 
something different than the calm process. Uh, the Italian Chess Federation is a very quiet organization. We, we are not doing it as a job. We all are passionate. We are professional, but we are not uh, uh, make a living out of it. Right. So we, uh, we are in a friendly atmosphere. And how many members do you have? Uh, sorry, how many? Okay, no, of course. I get, well, first of all, how many chess clubs are there in Italy uh, Something more than 300. Okay, right, yeah. I think we would have, in Ireland, I would guess we have about 50. We have quite a strong chess club history, in, in especially in the East Coast. Oh, um, right. And my own club is 160 years old. And so we, we also so. have very, very ancient clubs. Uh, the first one were founded in, in the end of the 19th century. Uh, most of them were among the founders of the Italian Chess Federation. One of the most important ones was the Venice Chess Club Salvioli. It was founded in 1898 mm -hmm. and it was one of the main founders of the Italian Chess Federation and also in the golden age of chess in Venice, which is uh, between, uh, let's say, the first half of the 20th century, it was one uh, main place for chess in Europe. Uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, in 1929 or 1930, there was a FIDE Congress in Venice. It no. was, yes, um, you will maybe see it uh, when they will publish the 100 years of FIDE book. This is one of the main first parts because uh, it was organized by Mr. Uh, Monticelli. Maria Monticelli was one of the most famous players in Europe at his time, and he was not a professional. Mm -hmm. He had a different job, but he was, let's say, a very passionate Italian player. Uh, he had some good results with Xavier Tartakover, who was heading to Italy many times in that time, and uh, he also established few tournaments, including the Sanremo Grandmaster Tournaments 1930. That was which, the one that was won by Alekhine, I think? Yes, yes. he grouped uh, a lot of players among uh, the, the top 15, probably only two or three were missing. And, uh, okay, he, in that time, FIDE even held a congress in Venice. And in that congress, we have found one of the first editions of the Laws of Chess. Excellent. So we'll see them, I guess, at, at, the, at the, the Olympiad uh, in, in Budapest in September. Yes. I, I, well, uh, if nothing else, I will be there for the Congress as I am the Secretary of the Rules Commission. So you are, you have roles in both the ECU and in FIDE. Right. Which is the easier organization to get a decision out of and why? Well, uh, in ECU it is definitely easier. And mainly for two reasons. Uh, well, I would say three reasons. The first reason is that ECU is smaller. There's 50 members instead of 190 plus members, which makes things easier, of course. The second one is that the, the structure, the constituency of the ECU is easier than the FIDE ones. Uh, FIDE has several boards and a lot of commissions. So uh, to have anything approved, uh, from a commission perspective, you have to discuss it with other commissions, then you have to pass to a first board, it goes to the council, and eventually, yes or no, depending on what you are changing, it will finish at the General Assembly. While the European Chess Union has only the board and the General Assembly, and they cannot generally accumulate on what it has to be decided. Either it is on the capacity of the board, either it is on the capacity of the General Assembly. So every change will have only one step. And the final one is that uh, ECU is a European organization. So we speak about 50 people with very similar backgrounds. Uh, while FIDE is a world organization, in a world organization you have a lot of different situations, a lot of different local problems, a lot of different uh, way of thinking, so uh, it takes more time. In the end, you can work out everything in FIDE as well, but it takes more time. And you've got to talk to a lot more people. In uh, general, in yes. Right. Okay, finally, there is, I have to ask you, uh, there is a, a famous video of yourself 
and lots of other people like like Cardi, Dvorkovic, the president of FIDE, um, and you're all singing. I know what you mean. You are thinking a, about a well -known song. And so I have to ask, what is your favorite song uh, to sing? I have to disappoint you because it is an English song. Oh, Moonlight well. Shadow by Mike Oldfield and Maggie Riley. Okay. It was very famous in the uh, first half of the, let's say, 90s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you will not get me to sing it. <laughs> Marco, thank you very much. Thank you to you, Jonathan. Thank you. Thank thank you. you.